When I was younger, I used to find some of David Icke's material fascinating and compelling. Then, in the late 90s, when he started claiming that certain individuals, certain people in positions of power, were not really human, that they were some kind of interdimensional reptilian beings who engaged in human sacrifices and drank blood, I began to seriously question some of the other stuff he was talking and writing about, such as the Illuminati, the death of Princess Diana, and the JFK assassinations. Having bought and read several of his books, I think he owes it to me to at least listen when I point out some errors he makes in a recent video concerning climate change. To be clear, I am not addressing his political arguments, nor am I claiming that he doesn't sometimes make valid points. But when someone can be so wrong about a subject I do know something about, I have to wonder whether such shallow research also applies to their other material. So here he is, making claims about climate science. Lest we forget, carbon dioxide is the gas of life. Without carbon dioxide, we'd all be dead. Let's demonise a gas of life, shall we? No climate scientist that I'm aware of has ever demonised carbon dioxide. Among the scientifically literate, it's common knowledge that plant life depends on it for photosynthesis, and animals, like ourselves, rely on plants as being the first stage of the ecological food chain. The point which Ike, and many like him, fail to acknowledge, or are even aware of, is that it is the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which is important. We know that it hasn't been as high as 400 parts per million for at least 800,000 years, probably tens of millions. This is a vitally important detail which any critic of climate science should be familiar with. Without the greenhouse effect, which holds heat in, and stops it escaping, we would all be ice lollies. Kaput! Let's demonise a process that is essential to life. Why on earth would anyone demonise the greenhouse effect? This sort of talk appeals to those who haven't looked into the science themselves and are prone to conspiratorial thinking. I know, because I used to be like that myself. And by the way, talking about the greenhouse effect. This is a graph of greenhouse gases. Guess which one is CO2? It's got to be that one, isn't it? It's got to be this one. That's CO2. Oh, look, it's dangerous, isn't it? That, right up in the 90% of greenhouse gases, is water vapour. Clouds and such like. I know. Let's demonise condensation. Let's ban it. This here, lift it up a bit, this one here is CO2. And the vast majority of that is naturally created, not created by humans. As a self-described researcher, Ike should have looked into the amount of carbon dioxide released by humans through deforestation and the burning of fossil fuels, and then compared that with pre-industrial levels. Why hasn't he done that? It's easy to find data which shows that the natural level of atmospheric carbon dioxide was about 280 parts per million back then, whereas now it is 400. That's a 43% increase. Given that fact, I think it's a stretch to describe the vast majority of the CO2 in our atmosphere as being natural. Then there is the effect which the different gases actually have. Nobody denies the fact that water vapour, by volume, far exceeds carbon dioxide. But the greenhouse effect of these gases can be quantified. Why didn't Ike find out what those figures are and present them to his audience? At present levels, Water vapour, including clouds, 
accounts for about 75% of the greenhouse effect. Carbon dioxide accounts for about 20% and other gases such as methane, nitrous oxide and ozone account for the remaining 5%. From this it is obvious that human activity is a contributing factor to a natural process. Some of us, including most climate scientists, are concerned that upsetting the natural balance by extracting so much carbon from the ground, burning it and thus putting it into the atmosphere, might not be the most sensible thing to do. Do you notice um, also that these characters that go on about, oh, CO2, it's global warming, it's going to destroy the planet. Have you noticed they never mention the sun? in terms of heating. What on earth is that supposed to mean? A rudimentary understanding of the greenhouse effect recognises that it deals with the watts per square metre of energy retained by the earth from the sun. The thing which climate science deniers fail to acknowledge or understand is that the sun alone is not the only factor we need to take into consideration. The question is how much warmer the Earth is because of the greenhouse effect and how much of an effect we are causing by adding more CO2 to the atmosphere. The data indicates that without any greenhouse effect the Earth would be some 15 degrees Celsius cooler and that human activity has caused the global average temperature to increase by just under one degree so far and is likely to rise by two or more degrees before the end of this century. What nobody knows with any certainty is whether this will cause positive feedback loops such as the methane released by melting permafrost which could make the problem much worse. The point is that we are in the experiment. We don't have another planet to migrate to if we mess this one up. But they never talk about the sun. And yet, when you look at the graphs of sun activity, in, in, in other words, the cycles of um, power coming from the sun and earth temperature, they go up together and down together. This only works if you ignore what happened in the last few decades. Undoubtedly, in the past, solar activity has had a correlation with fluctuating temperatures, but now we see solar activity decreasing and global average temperature increasing. This can be accounted for by the rapidly increasing emissions due to the burning of fossil fuels. Why don't the Ikes of this world report the science accurately? What do they have to gain from misrepresenting the freely available data? Don't we all want to make this world a better place? Even if carbon dioxide was not a greenhouse gas, even if it was transparent to infrared radiation, who would want to breathe in carcinogenic exhaust gases? There's more than one negative side effect from burning fossil fuels, yet these climate science deniers seem to be making arguments which are music to the ears of shareholders of the coal and oil companies. That seems quite odd given how critical these guys usually are of big business and governments. On the off chance that David Icke sees this, David, I challenge you to do some basic research on climate science. As someone who purports to expose corruption and malpractice, try watching the documentary Merchants of Doubt. It's a fascinating insight into how some of the same people who once argued that tobacco smoke is harmless are now arguing that human activity has no effect on the climate. Believe it or not, you, David Icke, taught me some of what I now know about critical thinking and fact-checking claims being made. It saddens me to notice how you don't seem to apply those principles yourself when it comes to the claims being made by those who describe themselves as climate sceptics. There's a lot more in the video I'm responding to which I may or may not address in a future video. For the time being I'm focusing mainly on the specific scientific claims being made rather than government policies based on the findings of climate science.